Mezco treats us to some twisted sisters. Here's your look at the Living Dead dolls, the shining, talking Grady twins. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining has been immortalized as the Grady twins join the Living Dead dolls family. The memorable scene from the cult classic is recreated, depress the button discreetly hidden on one of the twins' backs, and hear her speak their signature phrases including, come play with us Danny, and forever and ever and ever. The Grady twins come outfitted in matching blue dresses with ruffled detailing, waist belts with bows, knee-high socks, and Mary Jane shoes. The Living Dead doll presents the shining talking Grady twins stand 10 inches tall and feature five points of articulation. They are packaged together in die-cut window box, perfect to display them forever and ever and ever. Now, before we have a look at this twisted pair, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall these Living Dead dolls stand. On average, they're all going to be pretty much the exact same height as they utilize the exact same body. But nonetheless, though, it's a service that I'm more than happy to provide you guys, the members of the mob. And according to my trusty tape measure, the ultra measures are on 5,000, you're looking at the Grady Twins standing 10.2 inches in height. To be fair, I really only just measured one of them, but you can pretty much carry over that exact same measurement to the other Grady Twin, Grady Twin A, Grady Twin B. Both of them stand, though, 10.2 inches in height. And then, in centimeters, one more time, stands 26.1, so a little over 26 centimeters tall. Also, for some size comparisons, we can bring in Jack Torrance, one of the other living dead doll that we happened to look at just recently, also from the movie The Shining. Yes, unfortunately, sizing isn't really something that Mezco Toys factors in when it comes to these living dead dolls. They're all pretty much going to be like, well, regular dolls. They're not intended to be of certain sizes. So, because of that, the Grady Twins happen to be the exact same heights as Mr. Torrance standing in the front. That is, after all, because they are using the exact same body, same legs, same arms, same torso. Well, you get the idea. Even though the head is different and they are clothed different from one another, they are, in actual fact, pretty much the exact same body to one another. While they don't come with any accessories, Mezco Toys did include a rather simple to read and easy to digest instruction guide. So simple, in fact, that the back is left blank and left to your imagination. The front, though, does tell you how to change the batteries. Thank goodness, though, Mezco Toys already includes the three LR44 batteries, so you don't need to get those right out the gate. But you do only need to replace them on, oh, there you go, on one of the sisters. Yes, the other one does not unfortunately have the audio to it, so only one of them will play the clips. It's a bit sad, but I guess really when you think about it, the two are going to be paired side by side for the rest of eternity and likely going to be displayed on your shelf together. I guess Mezco Toys felt it wasn't necessary to include audio on both of them. On the back, you can see how you can unscrew the plate to change out the already mentioned LR44 batteries. And you may also want to switch this from Try Me to Full On. Try Me will only give you one audio effect. On will give you all of the haunting splendor that we will be having a look at. So they do come included with that, which if it's not much, granted, no, but at least it's something. Now, one interesting thing I wanted to mention about the packaging before we move on to the rest of this review is that Mezco Toys did call these the Talking Grady Twins. Now, in the film, Danny first encounters Alexia and Alexa down the West Wing hallway of the Overlook Hotel. And you'll remember that one does seem visibly taller, slightly older than the other. In the beginning of the film, also, Stuart Ullman describes Grady's two little girls as being the ages of 8 and 10. Well, I don't know too much about twins, but the likelihood of having a gap of two years in between the birth of the first sister and then the second sister, it's probably not going to happen. So in actual fact, these are Grady sisters, not Grady twins. Though they are dressed the same and looking the same, this is, of course, something that parents do nowadays with uh, sisters of close enough ages. Sometimes they like to dress them in similar outfits. So it would make perfect sense that in the film... Grady did the exact same thing, dressed up the two sisters in similar outfits, though their ages were, of course, quite considerably further apart by two years. 
Anyways, looking at the two side by side, they do share some identical looks to them. Their faces are very similar, slightly changed from one to the other, but they are the exact same height, unlike in the film. Now, again, we already did the comparison with Jack Torrance, so that we know they pretty much share the exact same bodies. So there's no chance that one is going to be a little bit taller than the other, but one is different from the other. Remember I mentioned that one of them did have audio clips? Now, I'll leave it to you to guess which one you think is the talking Grady's sister. Go ahead. Unfortunately, due to copyright, I can't provide the Jeopardy music. Any guesses? If you guess this one, somebody was right about at that time where they were going to guess for themselves. But if you did guess this sister, you would be correct. While they are identical in appearance, identical in clothing... This one here does have the audio. We'll open up the back of her dress, which is attached just via Velcro. And you can see there is the battery compartment that would be housing three LR44 batteries. Down below, there's the on, off, and try me mode. And then down below that is the button, just below the switch. What I don't get, though, is between toggling it between try me and on, I don't actually notice any difference with the audio. It seems like it plays the exact same clips. I thought perhaps the length of clip might have changed, but it does seem like it's the exact same clips from one another. We'll go ahead and just attach this like so, and we'll go ahead and press the button so you can hear the sound effects, the audio clips. Here we go. And one more. They only really cycle through three audio clips from the film. To be fair, though, they didn't really have a lot of audio clips to start off with. So the fact that we do get that in one of them, which again is a bit disappointing that they didn't actually put it in both of them. But again, I get for the fact that because... The, having the mechanics, having, the, of course, the battery compartment inside, and being able to do that and recreate that on the second one would likely have increased the prices of these. At the end of the day, when it comes to displaying them, you're probably going to be displaying both Alexia and Alexa Grady side by side, as they should be anyways. So it doesn't really make much sense why you would have to have them in both of them. Looking at the two faces side by side, they do seem similar though the airbrushing around the eyes is slightly different. And maybe we'll just call this one Alexia. You can see that she's got a little bit more of the reddish rouge around the eyes, where Alexa here is a slightly more brownish or slightly more darker black. The eyes are very similar. The expression is very similar. The hair is very different as well. Um, of course, this could simply just be the case by the way it was produced in the factory. Maybe the hair will change slightly. I mean, both of them do sport, as you can see, the little white flowers here. But the hair here on Alexa, I think, is the hair is just a little bit more tucked further back. You could probably pull off the exact same look by changing and affecting the hair yourself. But that's about the only thing that really seems different between the two sisters. Mostly, it's the airbrushing around the eyes. The hair, yes, you could chalk up to the fact it is a little bit different. But the rest of the outfits and the rest of the bodies are identical to one another. The same dresses, the same ruffles on the back, the same bows located on the back. Of course, this one doesn't have the battery compartment. Same hands, same socks, same shoes. There's what the undersides of the shoes look like. I must say, though, I mean, I'm kind of actually liking this one a little bit more than Jack Torrance. Jack Torrance was a neat-looking Living Dead doll, but I really like the eerie airbrushing that they've a arrived at adding that around the eyes as i said though the eyes are about the only thing that really does change between the two they have sort of a somber expression in the film also so i don't expect them to have some real exaggerated features here when it comes to the dolls this is exactly what i'm talking about when it comes to living dead dolls getting an idea pulling figures and characters from films that work and translate well to a living dead doll some of them are a little bit more successful than others this is like flat out looking like an actual doll if actual fact if, if you just removed like the airbrushing that dark shadowing around the eyes 
you'd be probably hard pressed to not look at these as just simply regular dolls. I mean, this could be something I could give to my daughter, for example, unlike maybe some of the other living dead dolls that we had looked at before. These just look like natural looking dolls. And one thing about it, though, is if you are somebody that's collecting these, unless your friend knows where these are pulled from, the fact that they do are, are identical, somewhat identical to one another, he might actually just think that you're collecting dolls, which there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, it's just more so for the fact that these look more like dolls and less like you could probably hand pick them from, say, like a Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees. You know exactly who those characters are. If you're not familiar too much with The Shining, and if you aren't, shame, shame, shame on you, you probably would just think that these are regular run-of-the-mill dolls with some excessive shading around the eyes as really being the only thing that separates them from looking like regular dolls. So let's have a look at the articulation on them. I'm only going to look on this one because, again, they're going to be exactly the same to one another. The head rotates all the way around. In actual fact, you wouldn't be able to do that with a real person, but we can certainly pull that off with a living dead doll. The head moves up and down, and you can also rock them back and forth. The arms about the same same working way. I mean, they go out to about a 45 degree angle. You can move the arms forward. You can move the arms back. No waist articulation, uh, no leg split or anything like that. And then, like I said, you can just move the feet back and forth. Essentially, what you'd be looking at is a V cut on the hinging of the feet or on the legs. So when you move the legs out, they don't move forward. They move out. If that makes any sense. Again, I really like these. The thing about them, though, is because they look a little bit more like dolls, that works in a good way, and it also kind of works in a bit of a bad way as well. Like, I would know, looking at these, if somebody had them in their collection, that they were from, they were the Grady sisters from The Shining, one of my all-time, if not my favorite horror film of all time. Of course, you can bring in characters that sort of explain things a little bit more by bringing in Jack Torrance. Even like, again, looking at them, the hard thing about them is if you aren't a big fan of living dead dolls, then this probably isn't going to be your cup of tea. Things I do like in life are collecting living dead dolls, watching horror films, and my all-time favorite horror film ever is the original Kubrick masterpiece, The Shining. So dolls like these are right up my alley, even though they, again, look a little bit more like a regular doll ver versus something that's pulled directly from a film. Okay, okay, so maybe Mezco Toys might have misled a bit when it comes to the description on the front of the box. Calling it the Living Dead Dolls, the Shining, Talking Grady Twins, when both Alexia and Alexa were separated by two years, doesn't quite really make them twins. It makes them more sisters than anything else. Also calling them Talking Grady Twins, for me, thinks that both the dolls have the capabilities of playing the audio clips, where that's a bit of a fib as well. It's only really one of them that has the capabilities. In actual fact, they probably should have changed the packaging description to Living Dead Dolls, the Talking Grady Sisters, where only really one of them actually does have the capabilities of talking. That's probably why I don't get into marketing much. I mean, in actual fact, and one of the reasonings also why we're looking at the back of the box too, if you look at the way that they've f photographed the back, and a lot of this could be really more f uh, just the tweaking of the photography, they look a little different on the back than they actually appear in real life. On the back, they look malnourished, paler in their faces, and the darkness around their eyes are a little bit more profound. Their dresses are also a little paler as well, which makes me think it's more just tweaking in photography. In actual fact, when you look at how pretty they are in person, these are kind of the dolls that I would expect to give to my daughter. She would granted ask why they look exactly the same. I would have to say, no, no, honey, they're not exactly the same. They're sisters. One is 10 and one was eight. She wouldn't even care. She would probably ask also where they're from. And I would probably be very reluctant to describe The Shining, nor really to have her watching the film. She's not really at that age yet to be digesting horror films. Rest assured that will be happening later on in her life. But these are pretty looking dolls. I mean, I feel in a bit of a way that looking at these, I'm looking at just regular dolls that I would put on display. I mean, I know the source material that they're pulling from, but they don't look as eerie as maybe some of the others we had looked at before. They're nice additions to my collection, and I certainly love for the fact that one does have the audio clips. I may have been disappointed initially that they don't both have audio clips, but again, if you're probably going to be displaying one of them, you're probably going to be displaying them together. They're like in death. They're never going to be separated. They're going to stay together forever and ever and ever. 
What do you guys think down below in the comments section? Let me know what you guys think of the new Mezco Toys Living Dead Dolls, The Shining, Alexia and Alexa, the Talking Grady Sisters. I made a bit of a tweak there in the description. I'll keep it still the way it was in the title. We'll see how many people actually say they're not actually twins. Yeah, I know that. I know that. If you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and stay tuned. There's going to be a whole lot of videos coming your way, so keep your peepers peeled for those. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.